All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome uh, to this week's uh, Houston Real Estate Mastermind. And today we're going to continue talking about the, uh, the homework assignment from last week, which is how to find sellers in, you know, in your neighborhood, in your areas. All right. So, uh, so, you know, so last week we talked about we talked about driving your neighborhood or neighborhoods that are near you and looking for houses that looks vacant that has any sign of distress at all whether it's you know the gutters that's hanging the mailbox that's rusted uh, the rubber band around the mailbox or a lot of trash you know on the driveway uh, tall grass like any kind of you know, any kind of um, distress uh, we wanted to we, you know I wanted you guys to take a picture of that property and write down the address for that property along with that picture so you know ideally you would have brought a notepad with you or a dry erasable board so that way you can write down the street address and take a picture of the house um, when you're holding up that notebook so that way you can you can capture both the picture of the house and the address in one picture so we don't lose the um, the connection between the picture and the street address and that is something you can totally do from uh, f from inside your car you don't have to get out of your car to do that okay so that was um, yeah that was the the uh, the homework assignment from last week and your goal was to to uh, to get a hundred um, um, you know, your goal is to get a hundred of those addresses, and so so we're going to continue that topic today on how to find deals. Okay, um, there's many different ways to find deals. Uh, however, for this training today, I just want to focus in on on continuing that that conversation of just how to find deals. You know, um, driving for dollars in your in your area. Okay, so um, so before we get started, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, okay. I have uh, let me see. Linda make a note here. She said, "I drove for five hours this a.m. I found only thirty four houses. I drove from fifty nine Titwell to my neighborhood in Kingwood. That was a lot of time spent for thirty four houses. How big were those neighborhoods that you drove in, Linda?" Were they small neighborhoods, or big neighborhoods, or what? Yeah, thirty-four houses. Um, number one, it sounds to me like you're you are going after um, a too too big of an area. I mean, driving from Titwell to Kingwood is is pretty far, so I think you're trying to cover too much and not paying it not paying enough close attention to. Um, you know to the the uh, to the houses or the neighborhood okay and I much rather you know you mentioned you drove five hours this morning I much rather for you to drive an hour a day and be really consistent with working on your business on a daily basis than trying to group it all in one day like that okay uh, it you know it's um there's this story about uh, you know, um, I don't know I don't remember if Gerald shared it in the uh, in the seminar I think he might have had you know about the um, the uh, the twenty mile um, the uh, yeah the the twenty mile twenty mile walk where no matter what they walk for twenty miles every day. Right, and that's how they got to the the South Pole and and back alive. And the other team that was not doing it consistently, twenty miles every day, um, ended up, you know, all of the entire team died. So, so, so that consistency is extremely important. Um, let me see here. Linda said there were only four in Kingwood and we have thousands of homes here. That means that your criteria might have been too strict, Linda. 
um, maybe you were only looking for. I mean, t tell me what you were looking for when you were driving out there, Linda. Oh yeah, you don't have a mic. I'm sorry, forgot. All right. Um, I think the reason why you only found four in Kingwood is probably because you, um, the criteria you were looking for maybe was too strict and you didn't see the more obvious. High uh, grass too high, mailbox sealed. Yeah, so you're probably only looking for houses that were obviously vacant. I don't want you to just look for houses that are obviously vacant. I want you to look for houses, any house that any have any sign of distress at all. They don't have to be vacant. Any sign of distress. Okay. Um, you know, like I said, even if it's just the gutters hanging or the mailbox is rusty. I mean, you know, the mailbox doesn't even have to be sealed. Just it's just rusted. Right? In any kind of distress is what I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah, be extra yeah. Don't try to run through the neighborhood. Like really just uh just just driving through house by house slowly and just pay attention to any kind of distress and uh and take a picture of that house. Okay. Um anyone else um did their homework? Yes, I did. Okay. And how I didn't get a hundred. I got about seventy five. Awesome. How long how um how many hours did you drive to find out? Um Probably a total combined of about eight hours. Eight hours, okay. Um, yeah, I did some on Saturday, some Monday, some yesterday. Um, okay, so about ten, about ten addresses per hour, right? Or eight addresses per hour. Yeah. So that's okay. good. Uh, and then, um, so what were you looking for when you were out there driving? Um. Basically, any sign of distress. Uh, some I know. Um, I noticed that you know you can see there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. Some you can clearly tell that there's still people there, but um, you know the the front door or the gate is kind of hanging out. The garage door is kind of bang and busted in. Nobody seemed to care. Mm -hmm. Things like that, and they have you know the house clearly has been neglected. Even those you know some that has still people living there. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah, um, mailbox, um, grass not cut, trees falling down, or um, some of the house that still have stuff cover on the roof where they really need to get the roof repair. Right. Yeah. So what neighborhood did you drive through? What area? Oh my goodness. I ran a few places. I started here in my neighborhood. Um, what area? What area are you in? Like what part of town? I up not west by two forty nine and Bellway eight. Okay. So I started here in my neighborhood. I was very disappointed. I found seven. Uh, I expect a lot less. So. <laughs> um, so it was very sad to found seven home. You know. <laughs> uh, and then I just you know, go out to the neighbor's neighborhood, you know, close by, and, and just a place where, you know, like on Saturday, I was going to uh, uh, 290, so I just went down Bingo, and I just see some neighborhood, I was like, ah, this might be a good neighborhood, because it's older homes, mm -hmm. so I just drive by, just not, I don't really pick an area, just wherever I happen to go, and if I have an hour or two, I would just go around the neighborhood before I get home. So. Got it. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely do that. Okay. okay then, uh, let me unmute you, Bill. All right. So, Bill, tell um, you said you found fourteen in fifty minutes. That's awesome. Where did what what I, did you? I, okay, it's uh, uh, countryside uh, is and it's in two sections uh, here in League City. And uh, the first one, I spent probably 30 minutes uh, driving it, and I found 10 the first day. Wow. And then uh, spent another 20 minutes or so uh, driving this, 
the southern part of it and found another four in it. It looked like it, it was really kind of um, where you have two different classes of, of type people, I guess you might say. Okay. Uh, the, the, the northern part of countryside was uh, not as well kept up whereas the southern part of it was, was better kept up, the people seemed to care, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, the, there was probably out of that 14, there's I think five that are totally vacant and they were all, all uh, let's see, four of them were north of, of uh, 518 and the other one was uh, south of 518. <clears throat> so you can kind of see that, you know, as far as how the neighborhood looked, the, the, the general feel of the neighborhood was was completely different, even though they're the same uh, portions of, of the same subdivision. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, some, some you know, some areas are that way where... Um, like a certain section of the neighborhood has more tenant occupied, so the homes are not as well kept as uh, as the section of the neighborhood where there's more owner occupied, where the homes are more mm -hmm. better kept. Yeah, I also noticed that uh, in that northern section of countryside that there was uh, it looked like one one of the houses was being rehabbed, which I thought that was kind of comical. Being as I'm in there trying to find something to wholesale for rehab. Okay. So, uh, but there's, as I as I travel more into to uh, League City, I think there's about uh, another, ooh, three or four neighborhoods uh, that I should be able to go into and find the rest of my 200 that I'm looking for. Got it. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, which brings me to the next question is that, um, you know, n none of you achieved the the goal of 100, 100 houses. What are your thoughts on that? Um, mine uh, is this, is, is I, unfortunately for me, I was unable to do it. Work had me out of town for most of that time, except for a couple of couple of mornings when I was able to do something. So when you say what kept you out of it, were you out of town? You said you were out of town, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, gotcha. I, okay. I was, I, I'm, you know, as you remember, I'm a pilot. Right. And so I've been uh, doing the pilot thing, you know, pilot here, pilot there, pilot everywhere. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. Uh, kids that can drive. Both of them can drive. Uh, one's still in school, the other one's working. Okay. So whenever you can't drive, can you uh -huh. ask one of them to drive and look for these houses for you? I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> right, so like, I, I, I hadn't really thought about that. You know? uh, yeah, learn to delegate it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean... You know, right now you're beginning, so I want you to I want you to do it as a practice. You know, uh -huh. obviously, um, you, as you get your business going, you're not going to be doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, in, right. in the future, right? So, so like I hire people to do this for me, so I don't have to do that. And so, mm -hmm. um, but right now I want you to do it just so you can you can know what it's like and what you know what, um, uh, yeah, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So that way you can, you know, you can uh, teach this to other people. Right. Okay. I, the, the big thing that I learned out of just the, you know, less than an hour that I spent already is that if, if you go in, into, a, into a neighborhood and you just kind of look around and, and try and see what's going on, you kind of get a, a sixth, as, as it were, a sixth sense of what's really there. Right, and, and the ones that uh, I guess I'd probably stay away from because I, I doubt very seriously there'd be anybody in there that are very 
very, very few to make it not so worth my while to, to spend the time, but uh, the ones that you know look like they really take care of it, it looks like it's mostly owner-occupied, uh, upscale. Right. Well, so, so this, so, okay, the way it works is this. The neighborhoods that are more owner-occupied, that are nicer, well-kept, those are those are great neighborhoods to to buy, fix up, and sell retail. Mm -hmm. And then the other one that are not as well kept, those are awesome to buy and 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 wholesale it to a landlord. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so we can make money in both neighborhoods. It's just the mm -hmm. way we make money in each neighborhood is different. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a nice neighborhood or not. There's always people, especially in today's market, where even executives are losing their jobs like crazy. There's mm -hmm. always someone in distress. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I bet you if you just, like, close your eyes and go knock on 10 of your neighbors, at least – at least yeah. two or three of them are probably behind on their payments. Uh -huh. Well, I I do know there's one house that's across the street from me that's been uh, for lease since about six months after I came through. Meaning they have a for lease sign up or and, and they it's have, vacant? They have a for lease sign up. It has never been occupied since. Ah, oh, see, that's perfect. And that one right there, I, I think, would probably retail out around uh, uh, somewhere between, say, well, probably around 275 easy. Got it. Okay. I mean, it's probably a 3,200-square-foot house. It, is, it a, is it a real estate agent sign, or is it a for sale by owner sign? It's a real estate agent. Okay. It's a real estate agent. Yeah, so we gonna have to do some research to see how long they've owned it. Um, first and uh, more. Okay. Let's see. I they were actually no, that was that one was already built. It's probably been there for for three years before Ike. Okay. Well, but we don't know if it's the same homeowner or not, right? Oh, it it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, they're so, the, the original owners. So, so how old how old is that house? It's probably seven years old. Seven years old. Uh -huh. All right, it's seven years old and it's full lease. A a home like that will probably not going to be able to get it discount big enough to do a cash deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can negotiate for a. Um, uh, you know, for for either a subject to deal, and then sell it on a um, on a wraparound mortgage, or what you could do. Now the trick is there's an agent involved. Mm -hmm. If we can, um, if it's been listed for six months, chances are the listing agreement is probably expiring soon already. If we can get a hold of the homeowner, we can get that homeowner to, to we can try to get the homeowner to agree to uh, to sell it on a wraparound mortgage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if the homeowner is willing to sell it on a wraparound mortgage, I'll give you an example. Let's say you you say um, you you said that house would retail for how much? An easy two seventy five. It's probably more like three hundred. Okay, all right. Um, two seventy five easy three, more like three hundred. Okay, I'm just gonna use three hundred as an even number. Okay. okay. Right. So let's say the homeowner owes two hundred fifty thousand on it. Okay. Okay. And the homeowner says, "Well, you know, um, you know, Bill, I'll sell it to you for." Um, Oh, okay, let's say the homeowner says, I'll sell to you for 275000 Okay? Okay. You go, great. I can buy that from you. But this is how it's going to work. Um, 
I have access to a lot of buyers who, um, you know, who are not able to get a loan right now because they have a few things on their credit. Uh, but right. if you, you know, but if, if we work with them and give them a year or two, they'll be that will give them enough time to uh, to uh, to get their credit cleaned up and be able to uh, to refinance you out. Mm-hmm. Now, if I can pay you two hundred seventy five, if I can offer you two hundred seventy five thousand for your house, and pay you, uh, you know, it it depends on the on uh, on the amortization. We have to calculate this, but I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna guesstimate the number for now, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and pay you twenty five hundred bucks a month for you know, and and we'll do a contract for twenty four months. So it's a two year contract, um, and and so I'm gonna pay you um, um, twenty five hundred bucks a month, and you give me up to two years to refinance to cash you out. Okay. Okay. Because the homeowner wants the top top dollar for his his home, you know, two seventy five, and you're not even negotiating him on the price of the home. You're gonna negotiate on the term instead, which is, you know, uh, you're know, asking him to basically own and finance it for you for two years, mm-hmm. and give you a chance to refinance it. Okay. So then, okay. so then, let's say the homeowner agreed to that. You will then go and market the house for three hundred thousand, okay? And you're gonna find, um, you, you know, let's say you're gonna find a uh, a homeowner that that can put fifteen thousand dollars down. Okay. Okay. So a new homeowner that is a buyer. So the buyer is gonna pay you fifteen thousand dollars down. Um, and buy the house for three thousand dollars a month, and maybe their mortgage mm-hmm. payment is, uh, let's say, um, uh, twenty seven hundred. I'm just using that as an example. Right. Okay. So what you're going to end up? So you're going to sell it, sell it to this end buyer, and 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 you know you can be the person that service the loan. So each month the end buyer pays you. And then you pay to the seller's mortgage company, the mm-hmm. twenty five hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. So what happens is that you're gonna get fifteen thousand dollars from the down payment from the buyer. Right. You're going to get two hundred dollars a month, and then in two years, when the buyer refinance and cash you out, you get your remaining fifteen thousand bucks. Okay. Or, or not not fifteen. Uh, Ten thousand dollars. Okay. You see how that works? Yeah, I kind of have an idea now. Yeah. Okay. So that that that's that's how we can structure a deal like that. Um, uh, you know that that's how we can structure a deal like that. Um, that that doesn't have a lot of equity, and it's a new home, and you know, and and um, and you can't get a deep enough cash. Mm-hmm. Now, what yeah. make what can make this deal even better is, let's say if the if the homeowner is um, let's say if the homeowner is behind on his payments. Okay. And yeah, and and um, depending on the bank, some banks are much easier than others. Like like let's say if they have an Aquin as the as the as Aquin for Aquin or GMAC for 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 the mortgage company. You we can yeah. even we can contact the mortgage company and get a loan mod. And let's say his mm-hmm. current interest rate right now is six percent. Mm-hmm. We can get it down to like two percent fixed rate. Right. So immediately the payment, let's say it used to be twenty five hundred bucks a month. Now it drops mm-hmm. down to like you know twenty one hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. See how that works? Right. I see that. Yeah. So there's many things we can do there on on deals like that. As long as the as long as the seller's motivated. Okay. Right. So I'm I'm just throwing I'm just throwing ideas out. You you don't need to know all of these things. Right mm-hmm. now you just need to find these leads, and um, 
we're going to talk about what to do with them right now. Once the leads come in, you know, then that's when AC and I will be able to help you analyze it and see which way is the best way to go. Okay. All right. I've, I've been eyeing this house across the way trying to figure out a way to make that work. Say that again. I said I've been eyeing the house that I just told you about. Got it. For for a couple of years now. <laughs> like I said, it's it's been sitting vacant, and you know it'll go through the high grass, the grass that's probably knee high or better. Oh wow! And it'll go through that uh, electricity on, electricity off. Uh, you know, and it, and it just kind of varies. Okay. Well, that, yeah. So so that's a that's. That's a perfect scenario. So I need you to track down that homeowner and deal deal with the homeowner that directly. Okay. I I think I can do that. I can I can get on to one of these uh, onto the actually onto the county assessor collector mm -hmm. and right. uh, find out about that. Okay. That cool. All right. So let's. Uh, uh, okay. Let's, yeah. So so. So let's do that, and when when we get to that, I'll I'll give you a couple websites to uh, to be able to do that. Okay. Um, now, let me tweet. Um, what happened on your end um, with you know getting a hundred houses? Well, um, a little disappointed at myself. I was setting for two hundred. Um, I I set out on Saturday, and uh, I was driving around the neighborhood, and I was kind of feeling awful, all the people watching. They're like, oh my God. So I kind of scare me. Mm. I said, okay, Saturday, Sunday, probably not a good day to do that because there's a lot of people outside. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I can do Monday. And I picked out two areas and I spent a lot of time and I didn't get many houses. Got it. So, okay. And I went back out yesterday. I put in like about four hours yesterday. Um, okay. So I don't know, just not plan it well and pick the wrong area. Okay. So next time, do this, okay? And and I'm going to re remind me to do this too because I want to make sure you, you guys win. Mm -hmm. It's more important that you you walk out of the... It's more important that you feel like you're a winner than how many houses you got. So, for example, you know, if setting a goal of 100 houses um, is not going to allow you to get 100 houses and that you would beat yourself up and feel bad about it, that's not the point. Like, that totally beat the point. So, I'd rather set a goal of just driving one hour a day and however many houses you find in that one hour, it's great. So, see, you don't have control over how many houses you're going to find, but you do have control over how many hours you're going to spend driving, right? Um, so, so next time I'm going to get you guys to commit to driving 10 hours, and that probably will equate to uh, 100 houses. Um, okay. so, so, so keep that in mind, and don't beat yourself up. It's just a practice. We're just doing this for fun. <laughs> And, you know, and, uh, and don't worry about the neighbors. Don't worry about people standing outside uh, because those are, you know, those are really great people, especially if it's a vacant house because you can actually stop by and tell them, it's like, hey, you know, I'm interested in buying a house in this neighborhood and this house looks vacant. Do you happen to know who the owner is? So... You got to really think about them as a homeowner. You don't want houses in your neighborhood to be vacant. You want them all to be occupied because that's how it keeps up, you know, the value of your neighborhood is kept up by how many nice houses you have in your neighborhood, right? So, so those people feel the same way. You know, they want um you know, they 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 want their neighbor neighborhood to be nice. And so when you tell them, it's like, hey, I'm interested in buying a house in this neighborhood. If you or someone you know that might want to sell a house, let me know. So, you know, you are really of service to them, not taking anything away from them. So you don't have a, you don't ever have to, uh, 
to be scared about that. All right. Um, uh, Terry, I was thinking today, I know you, you mentioned that you wanted to start out going directly with, uh, with um, uh, apartment buildings, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I wanted to throw this out at you and, and see if you were, you know, you, uh, this might be of interest to you. Most of the people in the mastermind are doing single family homes. What do you think about the idea of just doing your first single family home just to see what it's like? Um, because you get results from it a lot quicker, right? Like literally, you can get a house buy, you know, bought and sold uh, within 30 days versus apartment is a lot longer. So what do you think about, um, you know, so, sort of like going along with the rest of the, the classmates, get your first deal done, and then move on to apartment after that? Okay. As a matter of fact, I was already figuring out how to budget the 10 hours to go out and uh, find those 100 deals plus whatever homework assignment you give us for the next session. Awesome. Great. I like that a lot. Okay. So great. Um, so then, 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 then for now, for your first deal, I'm just gonna um, talk to you, you know, and and have you participate just like every, you know, just like everyone else um, in in the class here. So, so now, here's what I want you guys to do with the houses that you found. Um, okay. So first, let, let, well. I guess let's just first talk about what is a deal. There's two kinds of deals we're looking for. Uh, first, we're looking for for um, sort of uh, uh, cash deals, and I'll call them term deals. Okay. Um, cash deals are typically distressed houses, meaning like fixer uppers, vacant. You know, houses that we can buy very in, like that we can uh, give them a cash offer that is that is less than 65% of the after repair value um, minus so minus repairs. Okay, um, we are wholesaling these houses for around 65 to 70%, sometimes 75%. And so we want to find them for less than 65%. That's cash deal. And term deal are typically, you know, uh, nicer houses that we don't have, that we don't need to fix up. But there's a, um, you know, but uh, we can't get them for, for a cheap enough cash price. But the seller is willing to do owner financing uh, or lease option or rent to own. Okay. And, and, and the term deals are a little bit more, um, you know, more complicated to, uh, to work. But the, the example earlier that I talked to Bill about the house that, that he's, you know, that's across from him that's vacant is a, you know, gives you a, a, a good idea on how we can make these owner financing deals work. All right, we can we can do a loan mod on it so that way we can lower the payments down. We can, you know, um, if the payments already low, we can find a buyer that's you know willing to pay more for that payment, and you know we make money as uh, from from the down payment. So there's many things that we can do there. Okay, um, and then a motivated seller is someone who needs to sell the house. needs to sell the you know if you have let's say if you have a distressed property but the but the homeowner has no interest in selling the house uh, for a discount they they have the money they have the time to fix it up and sell it retail see that's not a motivated seller okay they, they just want to sell the house but they're not you know they're there's nothing we can do. The way we make money in real estate is by solving a problem. It's by helping the homeowner with, you know, with their real estate problem. So if they have no problem, then 
the, then we can't we can't have them solve it and if we can't have them solve it then we don't make money real estate business is not about the house okay it's not about the numbers it's about the people and what what's important for them now if if you find a homeowner you know who who just who uh, who wants to move out of state and they need to sell their home quickly or if the house needs a lot of repairs and they don't have the money to fix it up or they don't have the time and energy to fix it up so they just want to sell it at a discount or if you know or if the house been vacant for for months or years and they've been making mortgage payments on it where they you know that um, you know they're losing money on it every month see wherever there's problems is where we can where we can make money you know, our job is to help them is our job is to make a difference in the lives of these homeowners and if we can't make a difference in the lives of these homeowners then we can't make money from that okay and so um, so you wanna find homeowners that you can make a difference for you know, that that you can actually solve your, their problem if they have no problem then you gotta move on to a different homeowner okay um, so what makes a good deal um, you know, a good deal, it's a deal that, the, that sort of a combination of both of these. The seller's motivated and that we can either get, um, you know, get a, a really good discount or we can get a really good term, okay? If it's a deal that we can't get it for cash and we can't, you know, get it for a low cash price, and we can't get it for a good term, then it's not a good deal. Even if the homeowner wants to sell it, we just can't do it because we can't make any money off of it. Um, and you know, especially on your first deal, I want you guys to be able to make some money off of it. Okay? Um, there are times when I do a deal where I literally don't make any money or just make like 500 bucks, but I'll do it because I just want to help that homeowner out, um, you know, and, and so that's a very different scenario, um, and 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 it's a scenario where I know I already have a buyer, or I know I can you know just spend a few you know a, a couple hours and be able to help them out. Um, that's that's very different. If I have to put a lot of work into it, then you know I would want to be able to make money off of it. Okay. Um, so it's not it's not all charity work that you're doing because I know we all have charity that we like to support. So if we really want to do charity work, then we go and support our charities, right? <laughs> so so keep in mind about the uh, you know the um, um, either cash deal or term deals, and make sure that the the seller's motivated. Okay, so. Yeah, so um, last week I, I you know, I um, shared with you guys about driving, you know, driving for dollars. The, the technique that I taught you last time is, um, is called driving for dollars. And when you're driving for dollars, you're looking for vacant houses and you're looking for distressed houses. Any sign of distress? Okay. Um, and I forgot to mention that if you see any for sale by owner signs, to also take a picture of that and write down their phone number. Um, or if you see any for rent by owner, to also take a picture of that and write down that 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 homeowner. Okay. So what you're gonna do now um, for this week, we are going to meet next. Uh, we're gonna meet in person for an entire day next Wednesday from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. So make sure you guys uh, prepare for that. Uh, so from now until then, what I want you to do is I want you to go to Office Depot and buy a yellow notepad. Okay, not, not a white notepad, but a yellow notepad. Um, and I want you to send a letter to to all of these houses that you found that has signs of distress and I just want you to write a very simple letter to them hi you know 
um, my wife and I are interested in buying your house. Uh, if you're interested in selling, please call us back at blah, blah, blah. Or uh, you can do variations of this. Hi, my husband and I. Or, you know, if you don't have a spouse, you can just say, hi, I'm interested in, you know, in, in, in buying your house. Um, and and so, so anybody at all, uh, you know, I, I mean, you, it, this letter doesn't, doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to be very professional. It's just hand write, handwritten. So you just write this yourself, and just just handwrite, just hi, and um, say this generically. Okay. Um, and I mean, um, and you're just gonna put it in a normal envelope and uh, put a put a stamp on it. And you know, every day that you that you um, that you drive and you found the house um, that night, go ahead and you know, go ahead and uh, and uh, and send them a letter. Okay, you're going to go to hcad.org to search for that house and see what the you know to uh, to to find out who the homeowner is and whether or not the address for the property and the address for the homeowner or the taxpayer is the same or different okay uh, you can also go to uh, the, let me see. this is a private link uh, to a title um, I I have this link redirect redirected to a website from Stuart title uh, normally, only real estate agents have access to this. But my wife is a broker, so, um, so, so that's you know that's how um, we have access to it. But um, yeah, so if you go here, this is it, this is similar to HCAD, but it gives you a lot more information. Like it even tells you when the house was bo um, was bought, when the deed was transferred. Uh, sometimes it even tells you how much the house was bought for. Hey, you guys, hold on for me real quick, okay? Give me one minute. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let me see here. Uh, so, so yeah, so you go here and uh, just whatever address that you can find uh, for them, you can, uh, you know, you you can mail to them both the. Uh, so, so if there's two different addresses, one for the property and one for the mailing address, you're gonna send the same letter to both of those addresses. Okay. Um, and um, um, for uh, for you, Bill, if you would if you want to track down that uh, that that homeowner, um, you can go to. Uh, let me um, hold on real quick here. Uh, let me see if I can. I used to um I uh, this, this link is kind of long but um hopefully you guys be able to see it um you know what? Let let me make let me make a short link real quick here. Um, let 
let me make a short link real quick so it's easier for you guys to um So if, um, you can go to w.dudios.com forward slash owner tracker, okay? And you'll be able to um, uh, put in the, put in the, uh, the name based on what you found the name in HCAD or Stuart title here. Uh, you can put in their name and there's, there's several different, there's several different, um, sort of search engine that goes out there and find out their phone number for you. So you can try to track them down that way, okay? If you're going to call them directly. Um, okay, let me think here. Um, so so we're, we're just going to focus in on that for now. I'm not going to focus in too much on, let me move this down here. We'll talk about more about for sale by owner at a later time. So right now, I just want you guys to focus in on the houses that you found and just send them these yellow letters. Remember, you go to like Office Depot, get those yellow notepads and, um, and, and mail to them. Oh, and also, um, go sign up for a uh, Google Voice account. Hopefully, all of you guys have a Gmail account. Um, if, not, go, if not, just go on... Um, Go online and search for Google Voice, okay? Sign up for a Google Voice account. It's going to give you a Google Voice phone number. So that way you don't have to use your cell phone number. And a Google Voice phone number allows you to, uh, uh, you know, allows for you, uh, for you to have that phone number transfer anywhere you want. So you can have that, when somebody call your Google Voice, you can have it ring your home number, your work number, your cell phone number, or all of those numbers all at the same time. Or you can just have them leave a message. And Google Voice also gives you free text. So you can do texting through Google Voice to them. So when you send out your letter, um, use your Google Voice number. Okay? So that way you can, you, you can just have them leave a message for you. So, so you just leave a message and say, hi, this is Bill. Um, please give me a, you know, please leave me your name, your phone number, and I'll call you back as soon as I can. So just sound like a normal person. Sound, make it sound like it's your, it's your, um, um, you know, your your personal phone or your personal, you know, your your home. Okay, you just want to be a normal home buyer. And the reason why I want you to use your Google Voice instead of your cell phone is number one. So that way you can redirect this phone number anywhere you want. But even big, even more important is that some of these people that you call, I mean that that you uh, that that gonna call you, um, they are in a bad mood. They're like, you know, they're like, what? They're like, why did you send me? You know, why did you send me this letter? I'm not interested in selling my house. Like they get really pissy about it. <laughs> and so, uh, for those people, just let them leave a message. Uh, you know, um, so that way you only dealing with people who are not mad, <laughs> uh, and and just just so you know, even the ones that are mad, um, they might not be ready to sell it now, but somewhere down the line, 30, 60, 90 days later, their situation changed and they might want to sell at a later time. But I prefer to for them to leave a message, so that way you can weed out some of those people, so you don't answer the calls and. And, uh, and, um, and feel bad about it. I want you to constantly feel like you're winning. You know, it's very important in business that even if you do things small, but if, if you get that little win every day you feel like you're winning, it keeps you a lot more motivated to do big things. But if every day you beat yourself up and you're like, oh man, my goal is to, you know, to get 20 houses today, um, you know, my um, yeah, my 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 goal is to get um, um, uh, twenty houses today, and and um, <clears throat> and I didn't get twenty houses. So, like, you start to beat yourself up. I don't want you to do that. I'd rather like 
You know, I'd rather for you to just say, well, I'm going to drive for an hour today. And no matter how many houses I get, you know, as long as I drive my hour, I'm good. I'm happy. Right? So I want you to always have that little win. It's, uh, it's very, very important in your business. Okay. Let me see here. Um, so Google Voice. So right now, any of you guys have a Google Voice um, account? Uh, yes, I do. You do? Uh, awesome, Tori. So you already know. You're already working with that. So great. Um, so Bill and Terry, make sure you uh, make sure you guys sign up for a Google Voice account. Just go on Google and search for Google Voice. It's a free account. It doesn't cost any money. We, I have. Do we I have, have, go ahead, Bill. Uh, I had gotten a thing called Net Talk. It does much of the same thing that uh, Google Voice does, uh, except it will email you the uh, voice message. Okay. Um, Which right. I thought was kind of I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, Google Voice also uh, does that as well. However, oh. the the transcription is not that good. So. <laughs> uh -huh. The, the, the message, like if you just look, because they transcribe the message and email it to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, this, is, this, is, this is a voice message from whoever leaves the message. Got it. Okay. And this net talk for you or it costs money? Uh, no, it costs uh, about uh, $30, $40 a year. It's not okay. much. So, so check out Google Voice anyways. It's a free service. Yeah, okay. Okay? Uh, okay. It doesn't help for you to use Google Voice for your... You know, for 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 this purpose instead of using your net talk, because okay. you want you want this to be a disposable phone number, right? Okay. <laughs> so if you don't, I, you know, yeah, if you decide not to use this Google Voice phone number in the future, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, do we use our real name on this since we're going to be putting a return address on the envelope, or just go by first name only, or? What? Uh, you you can put your real name and real address. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're not doing a mass mailing here. You're 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 mailing to very you know very specific people here. Now, if if you see that it's a name of a bank, then you can just you just mark that one um, that it's bank owned or HUD, so you don't have to you know send a letter to HUD or, or the bank. Um, we're gonna work on that from a different angle at a later time. I don't want to confuse you guys right now. I just want you to focus in on on uh, working with just the homeowners for now <coughs> and so um, yeah so uh, so yeah so go ahead uh, do that this week and uh, and prepare for our live meeting next week uh, I'm uh, I'm in talk with AC right now to whether we're gonna meet at his office or we're gonna meet at um, um, you know at, at my uh, uh, my brother's office, but most likely for this first meeting, we're going to meet at AC's office. Um, so that way you can see, you know, you get a really good working experience of, of you know, people doing your live in action, right? Uh, so, uh, so that's, um, so, so yeah, so we'll send out, um, you know, let me finalize that with AC, and then we'll we'll email out the 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 address to you guys, so you guys know. It's gonna be next Wednesday, which is a week from today, and it's gonna go from 9 a.m. to to 6 p.m. Okay. Um, one more. Let me see what else. Um, so make sure. You know, to get the best out of this program is make sure you do your homework consistently. So, you know, do, uh, like, especially the homework for this week. Because what you're going to do this week is so, um, the, the, the results you get, get out of this week is very, very important for the next meeting that we have. So then, so next meeting, you will actually have um, leads that you can present that I can help you, AC and I can help you pre, um, 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 analyze them, okay? And so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important that, uh, that you start doing that this week and send out your letters as soon as possible. So like Bill, go ahead and send out your 14 letters today 
um, and um, you know, and then continue continue driving after that. Um, and three for you, the same thing. Go ahead and send out your your seventy letters, and then after that, you can continue um, um, driving. So that way, we have the mail in because you know it's gonna take them a couple of days to get into their mailbox, um, and so you know, so they're gonna start calling you after that. And so we want to give them enough time, so that way, by the time that we meet next Wednesday, that you have you know a handful of leads that we can analyze and work on. Okay, um, and uh, and yeah, just try, just keep it consistent every day. Drive, look for these houses, and uh, and and mail out these letters. So that's what we're gonna focus in on next. I mean, there's many there's many many different ways that we can find these leads and find these deals. I just want you guys to 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 be in action and 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 you know be out there in your neighborhood, uh, just like Bill said earlier. You you gain that sixth sense, and that's what I'm trying to get you guys to to gain is that sixth sense about your market, about your your area, your neighborhood. Um, and then you know, and then we you know later on, uh, you know later on in this mastermind, we'll move on to other types of uh, other types of of ways to find leads like on the internet, on the MOS, you know, doing direct mail to uh, to out of state owners um, or absentee owners, uh, doing door to door, um, you know, post-it notes and, and different things like that. But right now, let's just focus in on these uh, because these, you know, these get you into action the most. So uh, do you guys have any, have any, any uh, questions? Before, um, before we uh, we we end the call for today. We do want to keep a record of where we send letters, right? Right. I want you to put, yeah all all of the addresses that you have. I want you to put it into um, you know what? Sign up for a Google account. So sign up for a Gmail account. Okay, um, and then. What it, what a Gmail account does is that it has a um, they call it a, a a Google Doc, and you, um, Google Doc is like Microsoft Office, where it has a Word document and accept uh, a, um, a a spreadsheet. So I want you to put all of the addresses into a spreadsheet uh, on the Google Doc, uh, so that way you can mark which one you have already mailed to. Which one call you back? Okay, so go ahead and, and make sure you do that. So Google Doc spreadsheet. Okay, and um, and I want you to um, sh you know uh, share that spreadsheet with me, so that way I can also see it and track. Uh, track what you guys are doing. Okay. Um, let me think here. All right. So when you sign up for a Gmail account, that is going to be the same account that you you're gonna use to sign up for a Google Voice account. Okay. So you only have one username and password that allows you to have an email, uh, all of the Google Doc stuff, the Google Voice. And uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, so go ahead and <clears throat> go ahead and uh, and um, uh, like for you, Terry. Go ahead and go back and watch the replay from last week. And um, and I still haven't got your your goals and your uh, entrepreneur profiled. Um, that I requested from last week, Bill, and uh, and Terry. When you watch that video, you know what I'm talking about. So I need you uh, guys to email that to me. Tim, uh, I think we handed that in at the conference. Uh, you handed in me your goals, but you didn't. Um, I don't think you wrote down what your profile. I is. thought that was on there. Oh uh, really? Well, just email it to me anyways. <laughs> I think. It, I, so I okay. can so I can have a soft copy of it. Uh, at, at this uh, address that you want it shared to? Correct, right here. Tim at Tim. Okay. 
Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let me see here. Okay. In, any other questions, y'all? All right. Well, go out there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Bill, do you have a Skype account? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Did you add me uh, to your Skype? Make sure you send me your Skype. Either add me to your Skype or send me your Skype ID, too. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Um, yeah. So uh, so let's do that so we can all get on a Skype group together so I can uh, can better support you guys. Okay. Sounds good. All righty then. All right, guys. Well, um, then we'll go ahead and um, and uh, end this uh, end this call for today. And I look you know look look forward to hearing your feedback on how how things go for you with. The, the driving and the mailing and I'll see you guys next week in person. See you next week. Thanks. All right. All right thanks. Thank you. See Bye. you next week. See ya.